Yeah. But it feels good to be a senior advocate of Nigeria. It feels good to know that um, your colleagues uh, in the same profession uh, found you worthy of elevation to the highest uh, office that they can offer. And so it's uh, a thing of joy, but most importantly, it calls for caution because um, being a senior advocate, there are things, a lot of things uh, other lawyers can do and get away with uh, that you cannot get away with. Uh, the standards are higher, the, you know, more stringent and all that. So you carry yourself with some level of decorum and discipline because every other uh, person is watching, including non-lawyers. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a challenging experience, but uh, we thank God. All right. Emeka Echeba was one of the 21 senior advocates of Nigeria that was sworn in by the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Mahmoud Mohammed, in September 2015 at the Supreme Court. The rank certainly did not come easy as he had applied for it five times uh, previously. Uh, so, here we go. Oh, the judiciary today, the, one of the most uh, competent person that can talk about the judiciary today is a senior advocate of Nigeria. The judiciary has been dragged in the mud over the past three years, especially by the, the present APC government. I'm not saying, I'm not demonizing the APC government because at some point we also understand that there are things in the judiciary that are not supposed to be where they are. How do you view this in view of your high-ranking position in the judiciary in this country right now, where some senior advocates are accused of corruption, some judges are accused of corruption, smaller lawyers are accused of corruption, and then a general picture is now painted and is making them so tainted that uh, some people who don't want to be lawyers anymore. All right, thank you very much. <clears throat> I must tell you that um, the, the experience that we have had in the past few years, three years, like you said, it's an experience that nobody wishes to to have. Um, very sadly, it was blamed on corruption of judges and uh, lawyers and um, the likes. But I must tell you, first of all, that those uh, allegations have not been proven. That's one. Number two is that we all live in Nigeria. And uh, we know that Nigeria suffers uh, from endemic corruption. And from the state of Nigerians, the society, you get the medical doctors, you get the lawyers, you get the judges, you get the policemen, uh, you get the engineers and all. So it keeps, corruption keeps manifesting in different uh, areas of our, of our, our national life. But uh, I must tell you that what uh, cost whatever you saw play out from three years ago was just a group of people feeling that uh, at the election petition level that the courts did not accede to their desires and they felt they could now they are empowered they could do one or two things um so and uh, you know the easiest thing you can tell any nigerian is that the mecca Itiaba is corrupt you know uh, if i get arrested this morning all that uh, is needed is to flash it that is corrupt and nigerians will say yes we've always known that and then that justifies an incarceration which ordinarily shouldn't be so that those allegations came uh, but thank god that today the same judiciary has been able to put the record straight that even if you want to discipline a judge or try a judge there are procedures that you must follow you don't just barge into a judge's residence Mm -hmm. and you arrest a person like a common criminal and begin to subject the person to inhuman treatment because you want to prove a point. And that takes me to the point where I say that when you talk about independence of judiciary, you should also talk about how you will protect the judiciary. A situation where the judiciary is treated the way they have been treated does not make room for independence of the judiciary. But what, what occurs is that you now find judges who would want to bend over backwards to see whether they can contain the feelings of some people, you know, and that is sad. I'll give you an example. If the what we noticed uh, three years ago continues in this country, you can imagine if the Supreme Court wants to deliver a judgment against the powers that be, 
What prevents the powers that be that from picking the justices just before they del deliver those judgments? You mean arresting them? Oh yes, oh yes. If that had continued, you know, so there's also need when we are mouthing independence of judiciary to make sure that the judges themselves are protected. They should be protected also. Then talking about senior lawyers, senior lawyers and indeed lawyers are like any other person in the society. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes people are elevated on the account of brilliance, intelligence and all that. So, and, and there's no law that says that whoever is brilliant um, is, um, has the, more, the, 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 the best of morals. Mm -hmm. But I also can assure you that the process that brings uh, up uh, senior advocates also <clears throat> takes care of those, uh, <clears throat> those issues of integrity. And also once in a while though, you can find allegations uh, spring up and all that. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I, I don't think that um, it is safe and uh, true to paint the judiciary and indeed the senior lawyers with the brush and the color of paint that uh, have been employed by the accusers. You're sort of pristine quality that in June, the Anambra State Governor appointed you the chairman of the State Housing Board. It means that you have um, a populist opinion, you have people at heart. How would you comment on the housing deficit in Nigeria, especially as the poor hardly have living quarters? Mm. Well, <clears throat> it's a sad one. <clears throat> because even <clears throat> even when you look at uh, the housing, the provisions that are, are, are made under the housing schemes, you find out that most times even the downtrodden, uh, not even the downtrodden, even civil servants, the houses come at a cost that no civil servant depending on his salary can afford. So we still have a problem with uh, housing and the provision of uh, housing to the generality of Nigerians. And that takes us to the area of inflation, high inflation, uh, poor living conditions. That takes us to the point where one can actually attain the highest level in civil service and end up not uh, being able to provide for himself a bungalow for retirement. That is very sad. And that is why we all keep saying that the economy has to be worked on so that uh, our Naira can get stronger Policies, public policies will uh, avail the not so rich uh, possibilities of uh, owning their own houses. Down there in Anambra, um, it is not as if um, we have not had um, uh, housing schemes, estates, and all that. But you know, the governor of Anambra, um, the Chief Dr. Uli Obiano, is one who believes in excellence and he believes that uh, <clears throat> the game has to change from just churning out houses uh, to churning out houses that meet international standards and also to look at the possibility of uh, providing for the civil servants. Mm. To this effect, we are also interfacing with the Federal Mortgage Bank. We've provided uh, lands in Anambra. Yes, and uh, we, are, we are about to access uh, the funds that have been made available by the federal government. Wow. through the Federal Mortgage Bank, uh, you know, for housing, uh, civil servants and all. So the story is not that bad, but it, it, it calls for, for focus, it calls for, for um, concerted effort. Mm. But I can tell you, I can tell you that though the economy uh, is not supportive of what we are doing at the housing sector, the government is also doing its best, government at the national level, government at the state level. You've had the opportunity of um, representing clients from different uh, strata of the society, especially the high, like some of these governors. Do you ever have a, an opportunity to tell governors that why are you not performing? I'm not talking about, about Anambra for now, but generally, you look at the country, you see governors, even some of your colleagues that eventually get elected to be governors, are performing below what people expected them to do. Do you ever have time to talk to them, guy, perform? Hmm. Yeah, um, I, I have occasions to discuss such issues with governors. 
Um, but you know, the public perception sometimes are not correct. Okay. I'll give you an example. Okay. What Nigerians see are roads, infrastructure, and all that. And then they say the current governor is not performing, the past governor performed. But they are not looking at the wage bills. They are not looking at debt incurred by previous governments. You know, for some of the present, the current governors, they are still wallowing in the debt that previous governors thrown the state into. So they keep, you have to service the debt, pay salaries, pay salaries, and then you now go ahead and do infrastructure. And you know, borrowing is not easy for now. Borrowing is not easy because when you borrow, uh, the first thing that uh, the citizens of the state will ask you is, who will pay this? Who will pay the monies you're borrowing? You know what I mean? Mm. So yes, in the midst of all this, some governors have also not been diligent in uh, providing infrastructure uh, to their people. And um, that, calls for, that calls for some level of uh, rethink. But I discuss it with governors, and um, uh, I can tell you without fear of contradiction that today is better than yesterday with the governors. Many more are performing today. Across than, board. Across, across uh, yeah, yes, yes, on the average, yes. On the average. And, yeah. and, and, then, and then you also have to look at, look at what is coming in now by, by, by way of uh, allocation of funds and what obtained in times past. If you look at what the governors are doing today vis-a-vis uh, -vis the monies that come in by way of uh, federal allocation, by way of IGR, they are obviously doing much better today. I can tell you that. Mm. Now, the commentary of the president of Nigeria, uh, President Muhammad Buhari, at the opening of this year's annual Nigeria Bar Conference in Abuja to the effect that national interest supersedes the rule of law and fundamental human rights. It has struck a chord on many people that continue to argue against the president. Is there room for an argument for the president? Um, quite a lot of people have reacted uh, to that statement. But uh, my take on it is to first of all say that the president is not a lawyer. <laughs> okay. and yes, he's not a lawyer. Just like me, when I have medical issue, I call on my medical consultant to advise me on how to go. So the blame may not be squarely at his feet. It could be at the feet of those who wrote that speech. Because no matter how dictatorial a president is, if you are the one that writes the speech or, advises, or you advise him, it's so easy for you to look at him eyeball to eyeball and tell him this is what it should be. It shouldn't be that, mm. you know. But unfortunately in Nigeria, the more uh, robotic advisors are, the more they are appreciated. But I can tell you that that statement cannot be right. In all cases? Uh, it can, sorry? In all cases? Not in all cases. Uh -huh. uh, not, not in all cases. But I can tell you that statement cannot be right because that statement in the main seeks to do away with our constitution. Oh yes, I can refer you to constitutional provisions. I won't bore you because I'm not in a law court. But I can tell you that the preamble... Yeah, but you can keep our audience informed. <clears throat> yeah. The, the preamble to the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, I'll read it out. It well, goes this way. We, the people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, having firmly and solemnly resolved to live in unity and harmony as one indivisible and indissoluble sovereign nation under God, dedicated to the promotion of inter-African solidarity, world peace, international cooperation and understanding, and to provide for a constitution for the purpose of promoting good, governor, good government and welfare of all persons in our country on the principles of freedom, mm. equality, and justice, and for the purpose of consolidating the unity of our people, do hereby make enact and give to ourselves the following constitution. This is why the constitution was enacted. And I'll take you to section one of this same constitution. It says, section one, subsection one, says, this constitution is supreme and its provisions shall have binding force on all authorities, including the presidency. 
um, including the presidency, is my addition. Mm -hmm. And persons throughout the, Federa the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I'll take it again mm -hmm. to exclude my own words. This constitution is supreme and its provisions shall have binding force on all authorities and persons throughout the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which means the essence of our being, just like when you say you're a Muslim, if you say you're a Muslim, it means that Quran is the guiding um, book for you. Mm. If you say you're a Christian, the Bible, is your constitution is on and all. If you say you're a Nigerian, the constitution is your guiding, guiding book. Mm -hmm. You further go to the last um, section that I will cite, which is section 35.1. And it says... Every person shall be entitled to his personal liberty, and no person shall be deprived of such liberty, save in the following cases and in accordance with a procedure permitted by law. Um, it provides uh, 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 A to F, but none of these provisions uh, or, ways or, or escape routes include national interest or national security. Okay. So, the president unwittingly has introduced what is not in the uh, constitution. And I, I tell you, the constitution is held, it is held with such uh, um, uh, respect that nobody... Reverence. Yeah, reverence is the word. Nobody can truncate it, nobody can breach it without pronouncement from the court. And what is rule of law, really? Rule of law is uh, that all are equal before the law, that every decision of the court mm. must be obeyed. Even if you're not comfortable with it, even if you don't believe in it, you must obey it, and then you can appeal or seek to set it aside. That is what it means. And you now talk about uh, national interest and uh, national, oh, security, oh. Na national security. Uh -huh. You now say, what are they? What is national security? What is national interest vis-a-vis okay. -vis rule of law? And you find out that when courts take decision uh, with respect to matters, for example, um, I bring an application for the bail of uh, Mr. A. Mm. The court does not just grant uh, the guy bail. The court will look at the submissions of the state that is prosecuting the guy. It is where, when the state is now opposing the application for bail that the, the, the state will bring issues that relate to national interest, bring interest, issues that relate to national security. While the applicant and his counsel will now seek to show that those cannot prevent the court from granting bail. If eventually the court, in its wisdom, grants bail, it means it has considered the issues relating to national interest and national security. Mm. It makes its pronouncement, and that becomes the pronouncement of the court, which must be obeyed. So what you now see is that if you say that national interest and national security will override rule of law, what it means is that you are now saying that you do not believe that the judiciary can look at the issues and come up with their decision. You do, and uh, You don't believe in it, and you believe that you have the power to also elevate national interest and national security above. above what our constitution says should be. So the truth about it is that that statement was not made uh, in, full, in full recognition of the implication of our constitution. This book called Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, any day, any day, we whittle the content or we let it go, then there's no country called Nigeria. And that is why, whereas in, um, with regard to uh, acts, mm. laws of the National Assembly, you can, the, the, the National Assembly can promulgate laws which will end up being acts and the president will sign into law. Mm. The business starts with the one who drafts the bill the, the National Assembly will go through the bill. When they, when they go through it and believe they've finished, they will pass it to the president who will sign it into law. But that is not the same way a constitution comes by. 
or is amended. Mm -hmm. Constitution is amended beyond the National Assembly. It goes to the states. There will be public hearing. Nigerians will speak because the Constitution says, we the people, we the people, the people the, of Nigeria, their own interests, their own words are more important than what the authorities will say on any issue. So when Nigerians are in consensus as to what should be in the Constitution, then the, 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 it will now be amended, so amended. I'll give you an example. If the president actually believes that for the authorities that be today to fight corruption effectively, nothing prevents them from bringing a bill for the amendment of Section 35. Of the Constitution. Of the Constitution. Nigerians will look at it and now say, oh, we are now <clears throat> subjecting rule of law. Hmm you know, to national interests. If we agree, actually, that becomes the norm. That becomes the law. This book is called Grand Norm, mm -hmm. the Constitution. Whatever right. that is here cannot be negotiated. All right, sir. Look at, look, let's look at this take on corruption. The federal government, as it, it presently is, has been clamoring for special anti-corruption courts. This is primarily due to the fact that the conventional courts are bringing up services that they're dissatisfied with, technically, from their own view. What's your take on the special anti-corruption courts? Because very soon I'll open up the phone line so that people can contribute to the conversation. You just said that the courts are coming up <coughs> with, <coughs> with decisions that they're not happy with. Mm -hmm. Fight against corruption is not a fight for the authorities. It is a fight it's a fight for Nigerians. Mm. And so, if the a security agency is not happy with what is coming out from the court, it's a pity because they are not in a position to actually determine uh, the best for the country. It is the country that knows the best. Uh, yes, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. I've gone to court several times, moved application for bail, on corruption case. Oh yes, on move a corruption up. case. Yeah, yes, corruption case and other cases that are not even corruption cases, mm -hmm. but criminal cases. And you find out that the counsel for the law enforcement agencies so doggedly opposes bail, and you ask yourself, why should that be? Is it that the constitution does not guarantee it, or this guy who is making this argument does not believe that this uh, defendant is entitled to bail? I'll give you an example in America. America, people are investigated, people are tried. They come to court in their limousine. They enter the dock, trial goes on. At the end of it, the adjournment is granted, is given, and they go back. They do it 12, 13 times. Then they suddenly come on the day of judgment, and judgment goes against them. The limousine goes home, the man goes, goes to prison. To you know what I mean? So if we say that a guy is innocent until proven guilty, let's mean it from the depth of our hearts. You understand what I mean? You see, you see, you see prosecutors insisting doggedly that bail should not be granted. Or even when bail is granted, they are so bitter. Even when they address the press, they are so bitter about it. That is not the trial. That is not the judgment. The judgment will come. The issue is whether that guy is entitled to bail. So we shouldn't look at the issue of decisions of courts through the prison of the law enforcement agency because they are, you always have two sides to a coin. Mm. That is one. Then two, you're talking about special courts. To be manned by angels or juries from other parts of the Commonwealth, is it not the same Nigerians? It's the same Nigerians. What we should do and we're doing is to actually uh, look at our uh, Admission of Criminal Justice Act. If we find that there, there are some uh, loose ends, we tighten them. Mm. We will tighten them. The lawyers who are defending defendants uh, do, do not defend them because they support corruption. I do not defend uh, defendants in court because I, because they, 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 I support corruption. Mm. The, same, the same reason why I defend a rich man who is judged for corruption is this, exactly the same reason why I go to Ikoi prison. I go to Kujie prison. This year I've been to Kujie prison. I collected a list of over 35 people that I'm defending in court. They didn't pay me 10 kobo. Mm -hmm. 
every Nigerian is deemed innocent until proven guilty. If you say, because I'm defending an ex-governor, therefore I am corrupt, what do you say when you find out that in my chambers I have over 35 files of impecunious detainees at Kuje Prison, uh, Kirikiri Prison in Lagos, mm. and I'm defending them? Is it because of money too? I am doing what the law says I should do. I'm also, I'm also <coughs> an officer in the Temple of Justice. So when we're talking about special courts, I don't know how special we want those special courts to be. But I think there's been an improvement in our, in, in our uh, system. Um, the judgments are coming more rapidly than they used to come. And um, that's, that's uh, well, I give kudos to the judiciary. Okay. Now, the chairman, Presidential Advisory <coughs> Committee Against Corruption, is a target has advocated stiff punishment for counsel, particularly senior advocates who have turned obstruction and frustration of proceedings of high-profile corruption cases into an art. Mr. Sage, a law professor and a senior advocate, said punishment for sounds must include denial of right of appearance in such high-profile and grand corruption cases. Are you on the same page with him? I can't be on the same page with him and um um, the issue, all what um, Professor Sage says in all matters, including uh, the rule of law issue, that uh, the president is right. He says the president is right. These are things for tomorrow. You know, Nigeria, Nigeria actually is not in dark ages anymore. So someday, when the powers that be are no longer there, just like he has published books and they are read. Nigerians will publish for him what he's been saying all through this, uh, his engagement with the current authorities. But I must tell you something. He's a senior advocate of Nigeria. He knows how senior advocates can be punished or, or at least disciplined. So going out there to make such statements, they're not only inflammatory, but I think it's in line with his normal views concerning the activities of the powers that be today. It's so, typical. It's typical, and then I will not go into it. Tomorrow, where Nigerians have record, you know, when, when the previous governments were in power, they had a microphone, they were saying all they were saying. Today, the government in power today has a microphone, and they've been telling us how much was lost, and destroyed, and stolen. So tomorrow, we'll also hear the stories of today. But I must tell you that if any senior lawyer, including myself, is found to obstruct the course of justice, all anybody can do is to put up a petition to the disciplinary committee of the Privileges Committee of the Bar. And uh, I'll be disciplined if I'm found guilty. So you don't need to talk about uh, bearing anybody. Where is it in, in our laws? It's not in our laws. All right. 